Hello, it's my pleasure to be here today together with Esther Abnon and Mari Markson. Uh, my name is Meli Lanam and our focus today will be on grief. We are about to have a seminar on grief um, in Estonia at the end of March. So um, we had an idea with uh, Esti, which is a short from Esther, to, to really to talk about grief and then what we will do uh, during the seminar. And um, we have amazing questions from Mari who will deliver the interview for us um, that hopefully, and I'm pretty sure that they will, help you also to, to get more about grief, to understand more about it. So Mari, I will hand it over to you to deliver the interview. And I, together with uh, Esther, we will answer to the questions. Thank you, Meli, and thank you, Esther, for uh, enabling me to carry out this interview, which is going to be very exciting for me. Uh, especially uh, because I'm in a absolutely new role. And um, uh, I would like to start with um, asking you to introduce yourself first. And, um, and maybe especially from the perspective of this uh, seminar that you are going to host at the end of March in Tallinn, Estonia. So who are you? Where do you come from? Why now? Why in Estonia? My name is Meli Lana, and uh, I am very much local and an Estonian girl. Um, I'm a grief counselor. A grief is uh, a journey that has touched me um, very intimately and really has encouraged and also motivated me to really bring more awareness uh, about grief to, uh, in Estonia and also outside of the Estonia. And um, I met Esti last year, and I was so thrilled and so happy to um, meet another expert on grief that has such a profound experience, also working in, um, in crisis, um, teaching the teachers, and um, knowing so much about grief. And uh, the method that she uses are very, very valuable. So uh, I felt obliged, even to bring, to invite her to Estonia and to really share her knowledge. And uh, so now we are delivering a seminar together on grief that is open for specialists and also for grievers themselves to really to, to help to find uh, the inner force that grief has in a most supportive way. Thank you, Mary. So, uh, my name is Esti Avnon. I'm a psychodramatist and a grief counselor coming from Israel. And unfortunately, in our country, we have so many wars. So I worked with many bereaved families and with many orphanage uh, children uh, in Israel. And also I work with teachers, giving them counseling how to work with children, their pupils, and their families when they have to face grief. Um, psychodrama, as I will uh, tell before, uh, afterwards and also in our workshop, is also a way of uh, therapy that helps a lot dealing with uh, grieving. So I'm very, very happy that I'm invited by Meli to come and to teach and to help people to deal with grief with the ways that I am experienced. And I know that they are very helpful ones. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the historical background of your country, ST, uh, which uh, relates uh, for me to the word of uh, crisis. So please tell me, what is the difference between crisis counseling and grief counseling? How can people tell them apart? Well, when we're dealing with crisis, it is very uh, usually immediate help, like SOS. Mm -hmm. While grief counseling, it may be sometimes years after the event happened. Sometimes I have uh, worked with clients that came to me 
five years after something happened in their lives and they feel still the, the grief is overwhelming their lives and they need to, to look at it and to see how to go on. Mm -hmm. So there is a big difference. Yeah. And people usually, I suppose, they, they um, experience grief uh, through the loss of a dear one, uh, through the experience of death. But is grief and grief counseling related only to death? Or can this topic end it to some um, related to of loss? Well, this is very important question because usually people uh, connect grief with death, but of course there are so, so many other reasons for grieving, like uh, a loss of work, a loss of meaning. Somebody, his meaning in life is work, and when this work is for any reason stop maybe because he of his age or because he was not able to work anymore then the feeling is that he lost meaning of life even sometimes even when we choose some changes in life like divorce for example even if i'm the one that chose to divorce my husband it doesn't mean that there is not a long grief journey of living whatever was my life before. If it's house, family life, different habits, friends that were mutual. So many steps in life that need a kind of change are followed by grieving about what we lose, mm -hmm. not necessarily with death. And not necessarily about things that happens to us, even things that we chose uh, may cause us a lot of grief. Yeah, exactly. And the loss of safety also and loss of dreams. For example, if you've dreamed how your life is going to be, you've had your vision and then suddenly it appears that your dream has never come true or it will never come true, that is a loss. And it can create uh, a grief reactions and it can be pretty intense also. Yeah, that's right. Then people often, um, and that's fortunate, we have this possibilities also uh, in, in Estonia, people turn to um, uh, a therapist. Let's put it a traditional therapist, okay? So now, when uh, unwillingly or willingly having chosen uh, the next step, which uh, activates uh, the grieving process, what is the difference between seeing a traditional therapist or going to a traditional therapy compared to turning to a grief counselor, going to grief counseling? Because I understand that the background is the same. People choose uh, different directions, uh, seek different, uh, different specialists' advice. How does grief counseling differ from traditional therapy? Is my my question. Melly, would you like to? Yes, yes, I can. Um, I can definitely give my own experience uh, because when I had my own very intense grief experience then uh, I suddenly realized that everything that I knew about psychology didn't help me at all because the changes were so intense, the reactions were so intense, it really didn't make sense. Mm. And then um, I, um, I think now, what, now I say that um, uh, there can be also wonderful therapists who are aware of grief, of, of grief processes and all the layers of grief. And it, um, they can also be a wonderful support. But through my own experience, I realized that I need to know more about grief. And the more I learn about grief, it's like uh, it's a journey. It's a process. Uh, there are so many different layers, like uh, Esti also mentioned. It can be overwhelming. The losses can be on so many levels. Even when we talk about the loss of a partner, for example, to death, that can be a loss of a home also loss of uh, maybe the partner was um, the one who was holding up the whole family and then the family structure is changing uh, 
uh, how the family comes back together or they don't come back together. The loss of friends in grief is very, very, very common. And sometimes also like uh, as dimensions, lo loss of meaning of life and, and maybe also loss of identity. Who am I now? So the, the layers, uh, it's very, very layered process. So, uh, and also what I've learned from my own journey is uh, when, when you're specialized in something, it's so much easier to find the things um, that is related to the process, um, opposed to when you know on general ways about the psychology and, uh, uh, and the therapy. So that's from my point of view, but it's a very personal story. But Esti, what is your opinion? Uh, I would not like to say the things that you said because you said them so, cor so uh, correctly, but I would like to add also using all kinds of arts because sometimes I feel that the grief things, not always you can find words for it. And here is when I use different uh, art tools like painting, like to paint your, your grief. Sometimes I feel that talking about it is not enough, but while I use painting, it makes it so different experience. And we will see it in our workshop where I really want to use different uh, art tools so that people can show and can go through the process of grief with not words one hour with no words, only colors and sculpturing. And another way is using the psychodramatic word because sometimes in grief, we cannot talk anymore with the person that we are grieving about his loss. Uh, this sometimes comes suddenly. And even if it's not suddenly, sometimes we cannot say whatever we want when the person is still alive. And then we are, stuck with all these feelings, oh, I would like to say it, but I've never said it. And then psychodrama said, it's not important if he is listening or not. It's important for you to be able to let it go from your system. So there we can do the meeting. The meeting is with a person in the group that is playing the role of your loved ones and it enables you to, to show your feelings and to say whatever you need to say to this person. And in my personal and also, of course, in my therapeutic uh, um, experience, it helps a lot. Uh, I can tell you just one little story. When I was just eight years old child, my father died from cancer. And those days, my mother thought the best thing for me will be not to show me anything about that. So they sent me somewhere for as long as like 20 days when they were grieving. When I came home, there was no grieving and not a sign of my father, not his clothes, not a picture of him, nothing. Let's live life as if something happened, but we are going on. And it took me maybe 30 years later when I went to psychodramatic uh, session. And then for the first time, I really said goodbye to my father. Mm. I really went to the hospital where he was for some months dying from cancer. And I was able to talk with him, to say goodbye, which all my life I yearned for it. And another thing what we do in psychodrama is reverse roles. My father didn't let any letter for me, any recording, nothing, but reversing roles in a way I could play the role of my father and tell all the things that I was so much in need to hear. Like my daughter, I'm so proud of you, of course, and so on and so on. So this is something that I think psychodramatic work can give an additional therapeutic way for dealing with grief. That's very nice that you have already like uh, focused one of my um, uh, questions that I, I, I have been thinking about. Um, you mentioned uh, psychodrama, um, reverse roles, 
sculpture painting. You know, psychodrama in this word is the, the concept of art. So uh, just to, to be uh, sure that you have been able to express everything that's on your mind. Is there anything else you would like to bring in uh, um, about uh, the ways different forms of art can help uh, people grief? Is there anything that you would like to add to what uh, has already been said? Well, about art, as we know, it's again, it's not always something that you can tell in words. Mm -hmm. And also, grief is an experience that a person who where they know that there are no words for our grief. It's, it's bigger than words. Mm -hmm. And this is why we use art. We use it also with movement, with our body. I ask the, because also the grief is in our body. Mm -hmm. And this is why symptoms that are coming because of uh, the grief are sometimes symptoms of our body, like, uh, many different uh, pains in our body, like not being able to breathe well. So some work that we do is also with body language of movement, of dancing, of sculpturing with our body. And also I use a lot of writing, writing like I can write a letter for a person that I want to tell him something, but he is not anymore there for me. Not necessarily that he died. Sometimes it is my ex-lover. He isn't anymore with me and he don't want to hear anything, but I need to tell things so we can write a letter. And all this art, it's important to say we don't have to be artists. Each yeah. one of us has his own creativity we don't have to be uh, dancers or actress. We just have to be very uh, connected to our authentic self. And the creativity is coming with the arts. Yeah, this word before you said it, uh, the only thing we can bring and should bring is our own uh, authenticity. And then you said it uh, so nice, I'm so happy. Yes, so I don't need to be able to draw, uh, attend the workshop, I can understand. Of course, of course. But also it's so important that we really understand the importance of showing grief because we live in a society that sometimes the message is to hide your grieving. You know, it's the already two years later uh, what do you need go on with your life and coming to a workshop even some years after mm -hmm. is to give yourself the possibility really to not only to connect with your feelings but to show them mm -hmm. and even if you don't have the words to do it we can enable you with another techniques but it is so important to be also in a group that is a supportive one that gives you the permission to show whatever is inside and not to hide it anymore. Yes, grief needs to be seen and to be heard. But in our society, we are so used to hide it. And it sounds like if it's not normal. But this is where the group setting, as Esti said, is very, very important that I can be authentic self. I can express myself and what's really happening inside of me. And I'm supported and held in this process. So I, 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 suppose, I suppose that grief uh, is different for different people. You also mentioned going down to the like physical level, uh, expressing it through pains or conditions. The intensity, mainly, that you brought out before, the intensity of your own grief uh, then, back then. So, when grief is different for, for different people, people, what does it depend on? Where does that come from? That's so. I think that is a very interesting question. But yeah, Esti, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, begin. I'll be after you. Begin. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm. There have been also some research or some explanation why it is so. Um, 
So um, um, there have been there are like theories about so depending on the connection you had with the person. Uh, if you had like a very strong emotional connection, then the grieving can be also intensified. Uh, but I also know cases when there has been no emotional connection, like with a parent of yours. But uh, also in this case, the grief can be actually really, really intense because uh, you've lost um, uh, the love that you wanted to have from the parent. But now there is no opportunity even to have it. It's all gone. It's, it's totally finished. So intensity can actually even be there. And what also intensifies grief is when, um, for example, in my case, uh, I used to be very strong in case of losses. I was the strong woman. Everybody else was breaking down, but I did everything. Until to the point, um, the grief was up to here. And there was trigger and um, all the intensity, all the grief that was in my body came out. And that's really, really, really intense. So the grief does not disappear anywhere. It stays in our body. And that's one of the um, uh, reasons also why the grief can be really intense. But Essie, what is your opinion? Uh, my opinion is that grief is, it's not a phenomenon, it's part of our self. And Every person is different, so every grief is, is different. And this is why it is a long journey to know how to be a grief counselor. It's not just learning one, two, three, four techniques and go on. It's really to understand who is standing here, who is this uh, personality, what is the history, this person has before with grieving, with loss, and uh, what are the beliefs around that he's uh, really believing on? Is he religious or not? And what is he an optimistic person or not? What is the family or friends that surround him? Does he have a supportive um, family or not? So there are so many questions that we must understand before we are trying to do any step toward the grief. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, there are like doctors that if you have uh, something, then take antibiotics. But other doctors re would really see who you are and what you need. So I want to believe that there is not one recipe. Mm -hmm. There is very specific for each person and only if we really understand this person who he was before mm -hmm. then we can be with him in the here and now and help him with this uh, loss event in his life exactly i totally agree with esti and uh, uh, quite there have been times uh, that remind me all over and over again when i see i mean i meet a person I need to let go of everything and just be present and be curious about the person, who this person is, what kind of losses, as Esti explained. And I cannot put the person into, aha, this is a grief, this is a loss, or what kind of stage it is. It's not working. We're trying to put people into boxes, but we are not fitting into box. We are all very, very special. Mm -hmm. And also it's for, it's very important to understand what is the dominant uh, uh, way of uh, living for this person. What I mean is that when I work with a person that is a very logical one, mm -hmm. all his life he is very logical. So I would try to help him understanding the logic be behind his experience and try to show him what we call reframing, mm -hmm. which means another way to see his uh, experience. But if I'm working with a person that is very emotional, then trying to understand uh, logically won't help him. I must give him a way to, to be in contact and to show all his feelings and so on and so on. If he's very a uh, person that his body is the main way how he feels himself, then I must work with body work. Mm -hmm. 
So this is why when we are doing our workshop, we include logical uh, ways like thinking, like and movement work and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. It must be very rich workshop with very different tools in order to be really help for different uh, therapists. And also my belief is that as a therapist, you, you must come with very different uh, tools in your basket mm -hmm. and see what is working for this specific person with this experience. Yeah. So resting and being there for the person, not with the topic or the grief. It's being there for the person, whatever it means in a very broad sense, um, and choosing from the moment, from this present, uh, what is uh, the most helpful based on therapy practices and tools is what you know, starts and, and is important in the process. Okay, but now, uh, Imagine there is a person you are working with. How do you make the difference um, and can I understand that the person is in this natural evolvement as the process versus uh, that the person has got stuck in uh, their grief? Because we know grieving is a process. It's evolving. So how do you make the difference uh, between being in the state or having got stuck in grief? Nelly, mm. would you like to yeah. begin? Yeah, yes, I can Sorry. begin, yes. Mm. For example, when a client comes in or the, or the griever comes in, then uh, when I'm listening to the griever, then one of my goals that I put on myself is to support the normal grief process, the natural one, and to really to map if there are somewhere emotions or maybe belief systems or, or there is somewhere a body is showing me an impulse that um, something is stuck in there. So I'm really listening uh, to the words, to the way of thinking, um, the emotions, are the emotions coming out or or it will be swallowed down, how the body reacts. So it's, it's all about the mapping and discovery. And this is, for me, it's the curiosity. And we are discovering together with the person. When there is a belief, is this belief supporting you, you and your grief, or it's really stopping from, uh, from grieving? Sometimes, for example, a person um, can think that this is a punishment. I need to suffer. But when I believe that I need to suffer, then uh, I'm already really on the road towards complicated grief because I'm stopping the natural process. Or maybe also when quite often people are saying they're afraid to, to show that they feel joy mm -hmm. or they can laugh also because what others will think and, and it's not proper. And, and for themselves, it's not proper. I've lost the love of my life. How can I feel joy or how can I laugh about something? But this is also part of, it's a natural reaction to, to allow yourself. But if we stop it, then we're already interfering in the natural grieving process. Yeah, Esti, what is your opinion? Uh, listening to you, I was thinking about two very uh, different uh, experiences that I had about uh, what people would say uh, being stuck in grieving. And I would say, no, it's not being stuck. It is what it is. So I'm, first of all, I think as a therapist, we must not be um, judging. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I come from a bereaved family. I already told you that my father died when I was eight years old. And I was left with another uh, brother who was four years old. When he was 22, he was killed in one of the Israeli wars, 22 years old. And for me, 
it feels like I did not, I failed in my role because my role from eight years old was to keep an eye on my little brother, to see that he is okay. So there was a lot of blaming feelings. It was this way of grieving for me that I, in a way, although I'm not in charge of Israeli wars, but how could I let him go to the war? How could I let him be a voluntarily a parachute, which, you know, in Israel, you don't have to be this, only if you want to um, volunteer. So uh, for me, working with my stuck grieving was understanding my blaming myself, and it was kind of understanding my beliefs that were there from eight years old child. Mm -hmm. So although I can understand um, logically that I'm not in charge of Israeli wars, I felt that I did not, um, I did not save his life and this is me to blame. Mm -hmm. So I think that understanding grieving helps you not just to say grieving, but what kind of it, what is the layers? Mm -hmm. And when you really understand these layers, then you can help a person to go on. I have a very close friend that her daughter died four years ago, and she decided, I want to choose life. I want to go with life because I have family, I have other children, I have grandchildren. And she tried the best she can, but every time she is taking vacation, just two days, weekend, somewhere in a hotel, she becomes really ill when she comes back, but totally ill. For a week, she's in, in bed. And she understood going through therapy that is, again, blaming herself. How can I? be happy and go to hotel and enjoy life when my daughter is not alive anymore. So being stuck is, if, if you would see her, you will see she's not stuck because she's going to hotels, she's going on with life. But when you talk with her and we, you understand this, um, how can I say it? Every time she will go and do something for herself, she will be ill afterwards. So it's so important not only to see how people look at you, but how is it the way that you look at yourself and try to see if you can look from other perspective. Mm -hmm. For example, with this uh, very close friend of mine, I did with her this kind of psychodramatic reversing roles. And I asked her to, to be her daughter. What should her daughter tell her? And being able not only to think about it, but really to step into her daughter's uh, shoes and say to her mother, you know, I died, but I really want you to go on with your life. I don't want you to die with me. In a way, it released part of her blaming feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think stuck is a very complicated work mm -hmm. to understand and to work with. And it also uh, reminds me of what you said, we shouldn't be uh, judging and labeling things are the way they are, <laughs> which looking at my uh, um, question, I've written down the following, and maybe I shouldn't asking it if I have already learned your answers. It is as it is, but here is the following question. Um, how to draw the line between uh, grief and pathology, uh, which is, in the other words, excessive grief. It is also a, a, a label. Is there anything then as such grief and pathology when we go back to what you said earlier it is as it is maybe it's uh, not a proper proper question to to be asked anyway 
No, I think there is, uh, it is important to, to raise the question and at the same time to understand there is not one specific answer. It's not yes or not. Um, I can say not from my profession, but from my own mother, like 20 years after the war that my uh, brother died, my, my mother told me, you know, people think that 20 years past, she's going on with life, but there is always a pain there. It's not something that you can forget as, as long as you live. But at the same time, I saw my mother as a person that can enjoy different things in life. She likes to cook, for example. She likes to host all the family. She likes to play bridge. She likes to have coffee with friends. So what we know about uh, grieving is that it is not a linear uh, process that it has a starting point and ending point. No, it is a, like a spiral. So there are days in the year that my mother would be always sad because this is the, his birthday. This is the day that he died in the war. So before, like a week before, like a week after, she will be very much um, grieving. But then we can do other things and there is life in our house. If you can like do both, so you can in a way hold grieving with other experiences in your life. But if you cannot enjoy anything else and like all your experiencing is all your grieving and it is overwhelming anything in your life, and if it's going a year after year, then we are in a pathological uh, grief, of course. Yeah. yeah, well, that makes sense to me now. Thank you, yes, yes. Well, you are both uh, uh, therapists, people who turn to you uh, in the search for a there in their uh, grieving process. I don't know if you ever experienced uh, certain helplessness because as therapists, I mean, because people you meet, they are experiencing tremendous pain, you know, and it is not easy to, at least for me, I'm not a therapist, but it's not easy to stay present the side of a person who is going through uh, such a tremendous um, uh, loss experiences. So, how, how do you how do you deal with the, if you ever experience this helplessness of not being able to you know, support the person in a way? Do you ever do you relate to what I'm asking? not being able to pass in the process, not being able to take the pain away at least, and not even a bit of it. Okay, that we, yeah, that was. I think it goes to my past as a, as a child, mm -hmm. when, as I already say, eight year old child, the thing that I wanted to, to do the most is to take the grieving from my mother. Mm. I was trying to be the best child I can mm. uh, to make her happy. Mm. And sometimes I was able to make her smile and sometimes whatever I do was not effective. Mm. So in a way, this tells the story of my being a therapist. I am a therapist because I really care for people and I really want to help them. But at the same time, from my very previous uh, childhood, I understood not always I can. Mm -hmm. And this is something so important for every therapist to do whatever he can, but to understand there is another person here mm -hmm. and he must take responsibility for his life decisions. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I can do what I can do, but he has to do his uh, life the way he can and the way he wants to do them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people chose to stay with grieving, whatever their reasons are, and I cannot take it mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is why sometimes we therapists and especially therapists dealing with grieving needs to get to supervision mm -hmm. because sometimes uh, also when a person is really able to take something from the therapeutic meeting, he's going out from my room and I'm staying with his grieving in my body. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important subject that we will deal with in our workshop about taking a care for yourself as a therapist, mm -hmm. how to take care for my own grieving that comes out when I work with him and how to take uh, care of my failure feelings when he's not going out of his grieving. Mm -hmm. It's a work that has to be done. Which is again so interesting that you are uh, speaking about the things I would like to ask about uh, your own grief uh, rising in the process of being there to support another person when a therapist notices that happening uh, at the person who has turned to you for, uh, for support for help for counseling what do you do? What should be done by a therapist when uh, a therapist notices that their own grieving, their, their own grief has started to mount? Well, uh, Mary, do you want to, or uh, shall I? I think um, we can as do you both. Yes. Yeah. But no, no, you, you started and I will continue. Uh, of course, each one of us has his own grieving. I don't believe there is a person that can go through life without loss and pain and grieving. And if you don't let yourself be in contact with your own grieving, you can really not help anyone with his grieving. If you hide your own grieving, so you can't help another person. Uh, when I decided to work with uh, bereaved families, this was one of the questions that I asked myself, what would happen with their experience touching my own experience? But first of all, yes, I do uh, know that I've done a lot of work with my grieving, including going to therapy and working in therapy with my own loss and grieving. But still, there were moments in my working uh, meetings that tears came out of my eyes because I don't know if it was because of what he told me or because what it raises from my own. And I don't hide my tears. I think sometimes to be able to show, yes, I'm grieving with you and we are grieving together, it's something very touching moment and very important moment in therapy. So if something like this happened, I'm very much uh, telling. I don't, I know it's not very common in psychology, in some uh, psychology work, but when I feel very much touched by someone with my own story, I share it. And from my experience, it really is helpful not only for me, but mainly for my clients. I totally uh, support also what you said, Esti. Um, we are, there are so many uh, losses in our lives. And, you know, sometimes even, you know, aging is a loss also. I just realized recently how old I am. I'm not in my 20s, so in a way it's a loss. <laughs> Yeah. So we are in the post, we are processing the change. It's about changes. We live in the middle of changes. We change, the environment changes. So the loss is there. Sometimes it's really, really deep and, and um, uh, it impacts perhaps more stronger than the other losses. But the main key is how I as a therapist or how I, I as a specialist, 
how I deal with my loss. Do I allow myself to, to cry? Do I go inside or I try to escape? And this comes out in every therapist's office, how they deal with the losses. This, even when there is a knowledge of how to do, they still teach the way they cope. It mm -hmm. comes subconsciously and that's the key. And also in my case, so what I've been um, uh, looking out for is when I am in acute grief, then it's not a time to, to really to work with others. I need to take space for myself. Yeah. Because then uh, it, bit, it can be a little bit blinding. But yeah, Esti. Yeah, that reminds me when, when my brother uh, was killing the war, I took one year that I did not take any clients because I felt that everything would be uh, touching my pain and I really cannot be there for another one because I'm overwhelming with my own grief. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are times that you know that this is kind of work that you are not able to do because we are the, the way we are and we cannot change it. We cannot hide it. The client is feeling how we are. So only when I'm really able to listen to another person and when I'm able to hold my own grieving, then I can be there for therapeutic work. I really love the sentence that Yura Piachansky usually says, you can cry, but not louder than the clients. When it's louder than the clients, then... <laughs> you Wonderful. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's all. Mm -hmm. Because I cry also. Sometimes even it, it comes physically. The, it's like the body cries together with another person's body. It's automatically the tears come out. But I think it's so beautiful to be together a human being. Mm -hmm. To be touched because the stories are really, really touching. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So it is healing uh, when there is the connection between two human beings. Not... Um, a griever yes. and an expert who knows the skill. It's about mm. the human human connection between two human beings. Yes, the most basic values, the core thing of our lives, which is that's why grief for me is so beautiful because it brings up really who we are as human beings, the authentic self, as Esti mentioned before, mm. authenticity, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. Mm. Well, you you know, uh, change is part of change brings along uh, uh, grieving, which is natural again uh, in our human existence. Um, when it is that natural, why why should or does the world need grief counselors, grief therapists, when there is something that natural? Why should a person seek for assistance of a grief counselor? So, yeah, when should a in the process of something so natural turn to uh, someone who might still offer uh, support? There is another one, very, very good question. Uh, because yes, indeed, grief is so natural. But mm. we've suppressed our emotions and the natural part and the authentic part of ourselves for so long throughout generations because of different reasons, also the wars and so on. So you had no chance, you had to survive. And then learning that, you know, crying is not okay in public, being angry is not okay in public. And actually from very early age, we are taught by our parents that, you know, um, oh, you're sad, take a candy. Let's do something fun just to make sure that you're not sad. You're angry. No, you're not supposed to be angry. You're supposed to be, I want you to, you know, to be good and to feel good. So we're learning actually, aha, we cannot be our authentic selves. We have to be different for the people that we care about. So we're actually kind of like distancing from ourselves. But the key is to, to become one again. Well, this is what we are learning. Mm -hmm. Me also in my journey. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, and especially about grieving, sometimes uh, even if you have a very supporting, loving family, 
you decide not to show too much of your grief in order not to make them sad for you. You know, there is this mutual relationship that um, trying not to put uh, too much of your hard feelings on another person, even if he is your close friend or your daughter or whatever. So yes, coming to a therapist, it means now I don't have to take care for you. I can be myself, I can put, I can take as much time as I need for crying. I don't have to hide it. I will tell you a story, a very intimate one to, to make it very clear. When I was a little child, I would go to the loo to cry there. I would put the water because I was thinking my mother has so much from her own grieving. She couldn't care another little child crying. So I would go there to cry. And I think this is one of the reasons why I became a grieving counselor and I have a lot of children in my uh, work, in my uh, therapeutic work, because I was so, so, so lonely with my grieving. And thinking about it, maybe there was a family there that I could cry in front of them, but I felt it is forbidden. So I didn't let myself. They're right to say that one thing that uh, a grief does is that they help a person learn to grieve. I, I have one, like the last question on my mind. Is it possible to, to learn to grieve? A healthy way that is that has healing effect on a human being who has suffered the loss is it possible to study grief i would say that it's it's possible to to get to know yourself on a very different layers and to activate your own healing or to learn through different therapeutic methods to to support yourself or to to discover yourself what's happening inside of you esti what is your approach of course my my answer is yes 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 because if i wouldn't believe it i wouldn't be a grief uh, therapist and yes, my clients and the experience of 40 years of working with them show me that no matter how the grieving was a um, long process, but we can go through it. I don't know to say how long will be this journey. I don't know, to, I don't know when exactly will be the turning point, but I truly believe it is possible. It is. There were some times that I was with a client that I said, oh, would it be able for me to help? Because it was so much in pain, in grieving. But then I think this is for us, the therapists, so important to keep the um, hope, to believe there is a way out, no matter how hard it is, no matter how long is the way, but this is a belief that is part of my personality and it enabled me to work and to believe that yes, usually I can help a person to know how to find his way out. Thank you. Thank you very, very much to both of you. It has been the most interesting on a Sunday morning for me and I do hope that uh, this uh, uh, meeting uh, expanded uh, the topic for other people, authors, readers and thank you for answering to my questions and Esti have a safe journey to Estonia 
And uh, I'm very, very happy that I can see both of you already at the end of March and again for this Sunday morning and for answering to the questions. And thank you, so Marie, for the interview. Thank you, Marie, and I wait to meet you in our workshop and I hope we will meet a big group together to ex expert, how we say, to make our work be known for as many therapists as possible. Bye-bye and see you bye. soon. Bye.